Welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today let's talk about Batman 1989. Now, I am going to go see the new The Batman movie in a couple days, and I was thinking about this. I am probably not going to have a chance to do a deep dive into the older Batman movies. I think the only superhero-ish movie I've done, let alone Batman-related, is uh, Joker. Now, I've done, like, raw reviews on stuff, sure, but I mean, like, my... If you're new here, I do these really in-depth... Uh, we do a rating and review on movies called Flaw vs. All Reviews. I've done Joker, and still to the day, I think it's one of my favorite videos I've ever edited. Now, those are high-quality, high-editing. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I'll try to remember to link it above here in a card and then down below. Uh, however... Batman, I don't know when I'll, I'll be able to. Now, I would love to discuss 89 in depth and even Batman Returns. I, I, I love that one as well, probably more than it deserves. But uh, you'd have to put a batarang to my throat <laughs> to get me to discuss uh, Batman Forever and Batman and Robins. Robins Robin, even as a kid, I, I just could not tolerate it. As a kid, I loved the dark, gritty, grounded, more realistic. As an adult, I'm seeing the Nolan movies as truly the first grounded and dark Batman movie. Uh, not to take away from Burton, because Burton always had that dark uh, gothic vibe to his movies, like uh, Edward Scissorhands, for example. But um, the more I think about it now as an adult, the more I can recognize it is... You can still count it, for sure, as the, you know, the very first dark Batman movie. But for me, it feels like a dark version of the Batman TV show. And in a large part, it has to do with uh, the Joker. Now, the story and the characters as well, but mostly what surrounds the Joker. Now, one thing I want to show and I want to ask, my brother reminded me when we went to see uh, this in the movie theater, and this is the first or very first or oldest memory I have of going to the movie theater and being excited uh, my first memory of this is uh, heading in to see Batman for the first time. And me and my brother got posters. We each got one of Vicky Vale. Uh, anyone had these back in the day? I loved it. Here's a clear uh, promotional image of it at the same time. It's a different image that they used for the poster, but still, here's a better look at it. We had matching ones, I remember. That was on my wall for years. I think I had that from, you know, when I was six to when I was... Uh, Shit, like 14, you know? Anyhow, I think the, the there's two great things they got going for it, and we'll talk about it a little more in depth, but the visuals are stunning. Pretty much everything, especially Batman, his armor, his look, the Batmobile, Batwing, Gotham City, uh, the look of it all, uh, the Joker, you got Vicky Vale, um, everything as a whole is just fan-freaking-tastic. And the second thing it has going for it is the cast, the cast... The main cast work well together. I think Batman, uh, Michael Keaton, uh, Vicky Vale, at, or I'm sorry, Kim Basinger as Vicky Vale, and Jack Nicholson as uh, the Joker. The, this version of the Joker, it works really well together. <clears throat> now, early on, there, it, I, I've never seen this, but I think this is the first live action version of Batman, and it looks ridiculous. But you can see how they went from this to what we know, what's more popular. Nowadays is uh, uh, the earliest TV version of Batman, which is Adam West. And again, it's it's uh, just a T-shirt, <laughs> you know. And early on in '89, they have Batman fighting two thugs. They kind of do a little. Uh, they kind of subvert your expectations because it's uh, a husband, a wife, and a kid. And you think they're going in an the alleyway. They're about to be mugged. You think it might be the Waynes, but oh no, it's just a random people and. Batman is already established in fighting crime. He swoops down. Really cool rooftop scene. But he gets shot at immediately. So they set it up from the gate. They knew they were like, listen, this Batman shows up. He's not wearing a t-shirt. He's wearing armor. He gets shot at. But they probably took the Adam West Batman, I'm thinking, because some people working on the show had to have been fans of the character and then fans of the show to some degree. Now, maybe I'm wrong totally. And it's just a coincidence that certain things feel like it's it's the show, but dark. Now, maybe they were like, okay, you take Batman from the show, make them all black to keep that 
because he's like a shadow and ninja silhouette in the night. So having them all black seems like it's going to fit better. And that looks cool. It, you know, definitely looks cool. I don't think they've ever done that on the show, but that would be badass if uh, they just made a version of him like that. So we have this sick armored out car. I think they took a Corvette, turned it into a car. Again, for the looks, just, oh, man. And then you got Batman in his, his black outfit. He could come and go in the night. Kind of just, uh, again, like a shadow, like a ninja. And he's got armor to him. Just looks incredible. You have the Joker, which is uh, reminiscent of the, uh, the, the show one. And again, maybe it's only because at the time there was only so much they were doing with the Joker. So maybe that's why they look so much alike. But I do want to highlight the prosthetics on his face really helps this version of the Joker. And I think this is the touch because if you'll notice some toy manufacturers have done even adult collectibles, they've done this version version of the Joker, but where the sculptor goes wrong is they sculpt his face in a smile, but they don't, it's hard to put into words. It's like they don't sculpt the prosthetic. The, the, the way I say that is because you can see his real lips here. And this right here is the prosthetic that adds a bit of depth and size and extra flesh to him. So when he's making these certain faces, especially at certain angles, it adds like this deformed in a way, a, a neatly deformed smile. And I think that little bit of a touch really helps because, again, you have his real lips and then here you have the prosthetics on each side of his face. And... Uh, I think this is kind of like some of the makeup that's messed up because he's got a lot of wrinkles in this image. But you can see it here where you got some more depth to it. Sometimes it's just like red. Here's a little bit more flesh color. Uh, but that, that's what makes his look pop. And even in this scene, you can see it the most because his lips are coming away from the prosthetic. And he just looks extra creepy in this moment when he first shows up. He's like, wait, do they get a load of me? But I, I just see him as the show version, uh, but darker. And then, again, the Batmobile, from any angle, it might not be practical because if you look at it here, a speed bump is going to take out the Batmobile. Now, the Penguin's not in uh, the 89 version, but he's in Batman Returns. And if you look in the background, I didn't remember this from when I was a kid watching the TV show, the reruns of the TV show. I'm not that old, but... If you look in the back, it says the Penguin for Mayor. And again, taking the show, turning it to a dark version of the show. And I think that adds to some of the charm that we may never see again with Batman. I don't want to keep reminding you because uh, I don't want to be repetitive and keep bringing it up. I might do it once or twice, but... Again, that's when I when I watch the show, there's something about it that's just different. The movie, the movie. And I think it's because... It is like the show, but made darker. It's In my eyes, it's not like Batman, but dark and gritty. It's like the Batman show, but dark and, but dark and gritty. So, you know, it opens up and you got the family and then you got these two goons. This is how we first see Batman. Now, They're arguing about... They're arguing about some other guy who got thrown off a roof. He, he got thrown off a roof, like five stories. There was no blood in his body. And this is our first legit look at Batman. Love that. And they do that a few times. And that's something that I really do like. Where Batman is running around. A couple times it looks a little funny because he's in this suit. that's hard to move around. And it looks like he's just skipping at times. It's only like two scenes, I think. And it's real quick. But you can see how the suit is really restricting his movement. But they they do show it really well where it's a person who gets stuck in traffic. And has to get out of his damn, you know, badass Batmobile. And he's got to run. You know, he, he's got a grapple hook, though. And I think some of that shit is really cool and really does something for it. Now, my overall thoughts and opinions of the story and the characters and the flow of the story, I think there's some characters that should have been cut. I don't really care about the boss, underboss stuff that they got going on with the Joker. I think it's cool that they're setting up a backstory here. And I love how 
um, his boss touches his shoulders, just kind of, maybe it's just real quick. You're my number one guy. Just touches his shoulders. And then later, the Joker's making a, a joke out of it. And he touches Bob's shoulders, but he does it incredibly awkwardly way too long. And if you look back at it, there's so many subtleties, like when his eyes twitching, when that uh, that one cop, the heavyset cop, is giving him attitude. His eyes twitching, and then he pushes him. There's, there's, I think there's a lot more there that I love that the show doesn't get credit for. The movie where this little moment of the boss just touching him on the shoulders, it's two seconds, not even. But in Joker's mind, it's like the boss has got him there for friggin' three minutes bullshitting him, you know, ro roping him in. You're my number one guy, you know? And he does it later on, and it shows how bad that really irritated him. But the boss sets him up over a girl, maybe even some other stuff. Some of that I don't like. I like Bruce Wayne. I like Michael Keaton as Bruce Wayne. He might not be my best Bruce Wayne. I really haven't put too much thought into my best Bruce Wayne. But I like the little subtleties here where they got all the different soldiers armor in the background from different countries, different fighting styles. And he's like, yeah, it's from Japan. That's where I bought it from. Yada, yada, yada. Again, something that is hinting or the discussion is on the wealth, the rich and the collection that he's got. But it's showing us his his the potential understanding of different art forms of uh, different fighting art forms. And he just steals the show, you know, lights up the room when he's like, yeah, here, give Knox a grant, whoop-de-whoop, because -whoop. Knox asked for a grant as a joke earlier, and he's just like, what, do we get six cases of wine? Yeah, six good, and they're all making a joke out of it. He, I, I like that scene. Again, Knox, though, I think could be completely cut. With Vicky Vale and some of the investigation work, I think they could have trimmed that down, put it just with her. I can see how it works with him, but there's some stuff here that could be trimmed. Joker's boss and getting set up. Uh, they could trim that down as well. We can get right to the meat of it with an up and coming, you know, crime figure. Some of that just, uh, it didn't need to be there. In my opinion, it, it doesn't, I don't hate the movie for it, but if I got to give you honest thoughts and reviews, like a, like a critic, that's some of the stuff that I think could have uh, been cut there. I know his face gets shot and the ricochet tears through each side. And that's how they come up with the plastic surgeon, I guess, trying to repair the damage. Plus the chemical, <laughs> whatever the chemicals did, turning his, his face into a, a joker, a clown. However, I think it fits the Heath Ledger better because his face is like wrecked here. I like Jack Nicholson's Joker how it's clean, the clean, deformed smile. I I don't know. Maybe there's a better way to do it, though. But again, the chemical seems like something that calls back to the show. And this is a bit cheap here, the relationship, because they go, f f you know, a long, awkward table. They start there. And it's a real quick scene, if you look between him and Vicky. And this is how I respect the writing because it's nice and tight, but it's also kind of cheaply done. But it's creatively cheap, if that's a, a way to phrase it. Now, again, it's creatively cheap because they put work in the, in the having them come together but do it super fast on screen. It's awkward. They're at a table. It's long distance. And then they move them in close, intimate, with Alfred, talking about stories. Again, so we go from the long, awkward table to the intimate, in close. And then in a scene coming up, they're heading up the stairs drunk and they're about to shag. And I've said it a lot. If you're a writer and you want characters to come together and people to understand that uh, they care for each other, they either kiss or they uh, they knock uglies, you know, bump boots. What is that saying? Uh, YouTube's been cracking down lately. I, I don't know what it is with community guidelines stuff, just uh, restricting videos. So <laughs> I'm calming down today. But um, some of that doesn't necessarily work too good. One thing I do love that's only in here a little bit. Now, he's a crime lord, this version of the Joker. So he's he's got clean, crisp outfits on most of the time. This is the trench coat he was knocked into the chemicals with. And I didn't see this until the first time I watched it on high def, uh, 
you know, Blu-ray or 4K, whatever you watch it on. And it's real quick and it's it's it goes by super quick. Maybe a lot of people saw it and I just missed it, but uh, his outfit is jacked up as well. It's It looks like the chemicals has, has bleached it some. It's got a little bit of green running through it, purples running through it. It looks like some of it's bleached to make the purple brighter in some areas. You really need to put it on like a high def and watch it, the scene play out. I can't play it here or else the, they're going to cut away. It even looks like some of the purple rubbed off on his makeup there. <laughs> a little bit of a mistake. Yeah, that's freaking awesome. Here's some of that prosthetics. Love how that came out. <laughs> I don't know what he thought he was doing. You see some of it here? You'll tell if you go back and watch the scene. But um, he shows up with the other crime bosses. And again, for the, the meat of the story, do we need any of this shit? It's a funny scene. I love this moment where he's playing around with the dead guy. And he's like, oh, you think we should kill them? Oh, you're a one, you're one heartless bastard, you know? He pulls his tie up to his throat. A great scene. And it shows the psychotic nature of the Joker. However, uh, I don't know. It, it, we don't need any of that crime boss stuff. And I do like what they did with the family. It's not in the very beginning. We don't do this in, uh, over bloated background of Bruce Wayne and his family. But we have a simple, he's going to this spot. She finds out that's when his parents were murdered. We later see him remembering it. And then we have the connection. That's another cheap way to do how do you fit all these characters into this one movie, but also have them be ultimate enemies? Well, you have this tragic backstory with Batman's parents. It was young criminal Joker, Jack Napier, that killed his parents. I don't hate it. I grew up having the Joker be the one that killed Batman's parents. But even when I was younger, even my earliest memories of how I felt of this movie. I always thought it was a little too convenient, just a touch too convenient that he would one day become like his ultimate villain. At this point in my life with all the Batman material out there, my, I think the perfect version is actually from the Joker movie where it's uh, the riot that the Joker causes and uh, uh, you go and, and watch my video, but I talk about that and how it essentially creates what will eventually defeat the Joker. And that's kind of the irony of the Joker, like this movement the Joker creates in that movie creates the one thing that's going to stop the Joker in the end, which is the Batman. Uh, because again, his parents were killed at that time, which turns him into the vigilante and yada, yada, yada. Um, but you have him... This is a funny scene, though. He's like, how much do you weigh? <laughs> but he takes her to the Batcave, reveals that there's the poison built in. I know they had to do a scene with Bruce Wayne versus uh, um, Joker here. I keep wanting to call him Jack Napier, but... And... I don't know. I, I don't know if I like it. When I was little, I was like, yeah, he was like, let's go. But I still think, like, the Dumb and Dumber line. What if he shot you in the face? You know, like, he grabbed the, the metal thing to put on his chest in case he got shot. But what if he pulled out a bigger gun? He pulls out this little itty-bitty gun. You just so happen to find his metal pan for makeup. What if Bob shot you? He has a big-ass gun. I mean, like, I just, I don't know if I like the scene. And what are you talking about? You want to get nuts? The guy's going crazy. I wish they just did a little... Like, look, he pulls out... How do you know he's going to pull out this little-ass pea shooter? <laughs> it's just like... I don't know. I don't like the scene. Uh, and then he disappears. He goes in her front door. I guess maybe he went out the fire escape. But it just feels like he goes in her front door. They're leaving through the front door. And they're like, bye, beautiful, blah, blah, blah. After he just tried burning her face with acid. And she shows... He shows up at her, like, fucking apartment. You know? It's like... Some of this, I'm, I'm like... Oh. No, <laughs> I can watch it and not hate it, but at the same time, I can understand it if I watch it with a critical eye. 
I do like the Batcave setup, though. I dig that. That's like old school, uh, old school look, though. It's definitely outdated, but I love it. Uh, yeah, so here's the background. And then Alfred just brings her up. Like, the relationship is rushed. Alfred is just like, oh, here's Vicky Vale. But then again, if I'm a rich millionaire and, and my butler brings this, that's where he's like, oh, shit. My, bro my butler brings this down to my secret lair. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to be too mad. I mean, damn. Just Kim Basinger at her, at her finest. I mean, hot damn. And then we get to kind of the rushed ending. Now, I love all the Batman fight and stuff, but the Joker kind of brings people out. Just, here, come out. We're suddenly going to do a parade. Cops aren't stopping it. Maybe I'm, I'm forgetting some of the storyline or just ignoring it. I've seen it so much. Uh, but it just feels like uh, the cop's involvement is nothing. I know he made a threat. I'm trying to remember what that was. And also this little moment. Maybe I passed it. Where you can actually tell it's a toy. It's like a model. It's a badass looking. It's a, it's a super badass looking bat wing though. But you can see at a distance how it's how it's just a model, and you got a little miniature Bruce Wayne in, in the, the the bats. See, <laughs> yeah, but it still looks cool though. If if you guys watch it, you'll see. You'll you'll peep that. What time is it? Nine thirty. A little late to be shooting your guns. Holy shit. Yeah, Knox. Knox gets knocked out. Who, who cares about Knox? It, I'm looking for a clip that doesn't even matter. It's just, I finally noticed it after all this time, and I'm like, yeah, that's clearly a little miniature uh, toy of uh, Bruce Wayne, or Batman. Why did I keep messing up his name? Inside a, a model Batwing. But yeah, Joker just takes her to the roof. I guess he's going to make an escape with the helicopter. That's it. That's his whole plan. He's going to poison everyone with this gas because Batman ruined his chemical formula. So now he's just making an escape through this tall building. Batman chases him up. It's simplified. Maybe I like that. But I guess I'm wondering why there's not more Gotham police involvement. There's not more of a just shit hitting the fan there's civilians running around sure but maybe i'm asking for a little too much anyhow man batman takes a beating i like that he gets thrown through the steps uh, get bloodied up she starts kissing his outfit though that was a bit weird wait this part I just think, what the fuck? At first, I, well, even when I was a kid, I was like, why is she kissing his clothes? He's not going to feel that. I mean, what the fuck is going on here? And then she's going down. And again, as a kid, I'm, I wasn't even thinking. I'm just like, man, she's okay. She's getting out of the way. Now as an adult, I'm like, I wonder how many adults are like, where's this Where's this going to go? You know, is she going to blow the Joker? <laughs> you know, is she going to blow his jack in a box? What the fuck is going on? Quickly, pause it, pause it, delete it. Anyhow, <laughs> he just looks over. Huh? You gonna interrupt me now? I mean, come on, man. What the fuck? Batman's cold. He's cold hearted. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I think the. The nostalgia for me personally adds up or pushes this up a notch. I don't think I've ever compared it to Batman Returns, really. I've always counted 89 as like the ultimate. Sure, it's outdated. The special effects, the stories rushed in certain areas, over bloated with some characters. Bob just gets shot. I get it. Joker's crazy, kills his own men. But it's kind of like a, a, you know, a bad movie cliche having the bad ruler just execute his own men. It's like, eh. and then you have um, uh, a number of these issues. But again, what holds it together? I think that the number one thing. The visuals are incredible. 
no matter what posters you do. I mean, let me just pull this up real quick. You take Batman 89. We'll just pull a little folder I had together of when I was going to do um, the flaw and all. This is like a while ago. I was pulling images. But the artwork you can do visually, even for something from the late 80s going into the 90s. Fucking awesome. Everything. Even if you, you wanted a version of the Joker that was messed up, he could get messed up and then come back in the sequel and you can have your, your more messed up looking Joker, you know? But this look here, this clean, the, the neatly deformed, twisted smile, this art card is freaking awesome. There's another art card that's awesome as well. Some of these promo shots are wicked. Uh, the Batmobile, obviously. Where's this one at? Look how hard it is for him to look up. He's like, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, look at this. I, I got to find who does some of this art. I got to get it printed at that poster size. That's badass. I am not a fan of this symbol, though. I know they messed up the symbol. They fixed it with part two. My favorite Batman outfit is probably part two's cowl with part two's emblem Part one's body, although I really like the part two body with the box look to it. It just looks more armor like. The other one looks more like a. Yeah, look at that artwork. Roman. Uh, that's pretty cool. That's neat as well, but Batman looks a little. His head looks a little small there. Where the hell is this other one? Yeah, some of this shit is slamming. There's too much. There's too much. But see what I mean, though? Like, the visuals are rocking. I guess I don't have it. Oh, I guess it was this one. Maybe I was thinking of a different one. Yeah, it was this one. Yeah, that artwork is incredible. But again, the, the visuals are off the hook. Uh, off the hook cool. You got even the fighting. The, they have the uh, sword guy. Some of those quick snappy scenes are really cool. And I think the thing that keeps it holding up after all this time is even in the weaker moments, it's not it's not like downright terrible. Even though it's aged and you can definitely see its age, it's not like awful. You get what I'm saying? Some of it's it's uh, what's a what's a good word for that where it still has problems. But you look over it like a wounded puppy, you know? Anyhow, uh, thoughts and opinions about Batman 1989. I talked way too long on this. I did a second take. I don't think I saved any time. The first t take took 31 minutes. I cut it down to 27. I definitely probably should have uh, cut this down even further. And before you comment and say, well, why don't you write out what you say and yeah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I'm in the middle of doing a highly edited video for Halloween 2018. So I just don't have time. I sat down, ba -da -ba, I can't take five hours to edit a video together just because I'm working on another video that takes a ton of editing. So anyway, thoughts and opinions about Batman 1989 down in the comment box. I'm done talking. Come back soon for the Batman.